Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ballet Rain coming to you live from the box, and today we're going to be covering the ballet world's most recent and greatest event, which is the one and only World Ballet Day 2023. We're your hosts, Jordan and Eden, and we're here to take you across the globe as we let you in on all the highlights from this year's World Ballet Day. World Ballet Day is an annual celebration of ballet where companies across the globe live stream their classes and rehearsals for worldwide audiences to watch and enjoy. Incidentally, it is actually the 10th anniversary of World Ballet Day, so we're very honored and very privileged and excited to be sharing you the highlights from this year's event. In today's broadcast, we're going to be sharing with you guys what we enjoyed watching from different companies featuring classwork, rehearsals, and introducing dancers from all over the world. So if you're ready to go, then hit the like button, share this video with a friend, and we will prepare for liftoff. <laughs> So to start off our globetrotting endeavors, we're going to start off in the US because that is where we happen to be based. In particular, we're going to be starting off with San Francisco Ballet, which is an amazing company and incidentally, one of the three companies that kind of started World Ballet Day. Yes. Combined with the Royal Ballet and also the Australian Ballet. San Fran, of course, we're gonna highlight the amazing, amazing ladies class taught by Tamara Rojo. You'll remember her from the Nakia's death commentary that we did some time ago. She's a wonderful dancer and also a wonderful teacher. Yes. She's currently, I think recently she became their artistic director yes. of San Francisco Ballet. So it was wonderful to see her teaching class. She has such a poise and such a yeah. class to her. Yeah, huge honor for all of those dancers to be able to learn from one of the world's greatest stars. And also later during their live stream, we got a beautiful glimpse into their White Swan Potida rehearsal, also directed by Tamara Rojo. We got to see Misa Koronaga and Erin Robinson, mm -hmm. and they did an absolutely exceptional job. I will say I loved seeing their relationship as director yes. and dancer together. Yes. It seemed like they really worked very well together. Mm -hmm. And It was the... a two-way conversation mm -hmm. to raise the common goal together, yeah. so it was very good. It was a very good, very yeah. constructive collaboration, so it was yes. really nice to see. To come back and just there, no, even that's a bit too much, I think. Like the body a bit higher, there, yes. We're checking over to the American Ballet Theater in New York City, where they are currently rehearsing for Don Quixote. I loved watching this rehearsal. This was amazing. Catherine Herlin was Kitri, mm -hmm. and Daniel Camargo was Basilio. They were being coached by Irina Kolpakova, and she apparently is 90 years old, but I would have never guessed from seeing the footage. She does not look. 90. She's living she the best life. She doesn't act 90. And to still be teaching and directing and coaching and rehearsing dancers. The way that she does. It's always amazing and there's something very sacred about seeing, you know, the past generation giving all their wisdom and that yeah. skill and the insight that they have into, you know, rising stars. It's more straight on the yoke. Yes, that's better because you stray up. Additionally, the ABT Studio Company also gave us a real treat mm -hmm. and they gave us a little showing of Raymonda Suite and they got to showcase some of their studio company dancers mm -hmm. Kira Koko and Finian Kamechi in the Parada, Takumi Miyake in the first variation, Madison Brown in the second variation, and Sylvie Squires and Brady Farrar in the Coda. This particular performance was really a treat to watch because it was a very good showcase mm -hmm. of the future of American ballet. We had some really very technically strong dancers. I did enjoy the presentation as well. They had yes. really nice lighting, nice costume. Definitely a highlight. Yes.
southwards, we have a beautiful broadcast from, oh dear, Ballet Concierto de Puerto Rico. I am so sorry. <laughs> In their live stream, we got to see some clips from their previous season production of Giselle. Additionally, we got to see some little bits from their current season that they're rehearsing for, um, including Don Quixote, which is always fabulous. And also their Swan Lake, which was, okay, if you, if you go and watch their live stream and you saw the um, Odile's Fuentes, and then Siegfried's pirouette in the coda. That was really, really, really impressive. Breathtaking. If you're in the area, definitely go and watch these productions. They are definitely not going to disappoint. <laughs> going to fly all the way over to Dutch National Ballet and Dutch National Ballet really delivered they did this year's World Ballet mm -hmm. Day. First off, I love seeing Dutch National Ballet's class, okay? Their facilities are gorgeous. Beautiful. Their cinematography, yeah. it was it was immaculate. Of course in class we're always excited to see Olga Smirnova. Yeah. I think she recently moved from Bolshoi to Dutch National and she yeah. seems to be thriving there. Yeah. Also in class I was very excited to see Anna about to butcher names. Bear with us now. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Tsugankova. She is very, a very, very, very beautiful dancer. Yes. One of our personal favorites ever since we saw her in The Dying Swan. Oh my goodness. She's a very, very amazing dancer. Yes. A very mature artist. Very, very see, mature artist. She's yeah. really mastered her craft. The rest of their live stream included a lot of other fun elements led by our host, Connor Wamsley. Excellent, excellent host. Some of those included a What's in My Bag interview. We got to see what the dancers had in their dance bag. We also got to see some fun behind the scenes stuff. So like costume fitting and interview. What can I say? Dutch National Ballet gave it to us they this year. They brought it this yeah, year. So. I was very, very, I was very entertained. I was having a great time. Of course, we have to note the highlight highlight because we're all about the ballet here. <laughs> yes. Which was their rehearsals for Giselle with Olga Smirnova as Giselle and Jacopo Tissi as, I'm so sorry, by the way, <laughs> Jacopo Tissi as Albrecht. They always deliver. Yeah. No words. I think they are very, very well matched. Olga Smirnova is really, really beautiful, Giselle, especially yeah. in the second act. For sure. Because she has this otherworldly, ethereal presence yes. to her. Yes. And it's really, really, really beautiful. Mm. So if you're anywhere near the Dutch National Ballet, definitely, definitely, definitely make a trip out there to go watch them because it's going to be fantastic, you guys. It's going to be so good. Yes, yeah, so it's not on the same level as her, but it's actually you're always ahead of it. Mm -hmm. You know, even when she goes to the house, you can actually, you know she's going to go away. Say, come on, it's gone. let's go, you know. I wouldn't say it's sarcastic because it's not the word, but you are above the situation. Exactly. Now we're off on our way to London, but we're not stopping at the Royal Ballet just yet. We're first taking a stop at Birmingham Royal Ballet. We could not miss this absolute gem of rehearsal footage featuring Hao Liang Fang and Yu Kurihara in The Sleeping Beauty being rehearsed by the one and only amazing and beautiful Darcy Bustle. Darcy Bustle is a legend. Yeah. Absolutely a legend. When she was dancing, she was principal at Royal Ballet. Principal at Royal Ballet. She's yeah. a, a beautiful, beautiful ballerina. And even though she retired, she hasn't completely left the ballet sphere. She's yes. still rehearsing people and passing on her wisdom and her knowledge to the next generation, which is super, super special. And for these two dancers, they're both first soloists with the Birmingham Royal Ballet, and it is their first time ever dancing these principal roles. And that is a huge privilege and a huge honor, and especially to be coached by the, the, the legendary Darcy Bustle. Yeah, they're going to be making their debut in the upcoming season. Mm -hmm. And so we got to see them really working through these roles for the very first time. Yeah. I think what's wonderful about Darcy Bustle is that she made, she did a really wonderful job of making the dancers feel at ease, keeping the energy very light, yeah. you know, encouraging them just to, to work at it and uh -huh. not putting tons of expectations and pressure on them, which, yes. which is really, really nice. Uh -huh. If you are in the area, definitely recommend going to see them this coming spring, to see them debut in The Sleeping Beauty. It's going to be remarkable. And yes. You definitely don't want to miss that one. So check out their website, mark your calendars, because you definitely don't want to miss that. 
Yada. A little bit more action in that delapé. And one. Yes. the Royal Ballet Yay. and of course we have to touch on the amazing masterclass with Olga Ebrinov. I feel like that's everyone's favorite part of World Ballet Day and that's the part that gets like kind of just watched year round mm -hmm. because her classes are just always so wonderful so yeah. exciting and it's always good to see. Now come underneath good to the back corner all in one movement and up and uh, arabesque arabesque and then going into the rehearsals, we have a beautiful rehearsal for the Dante Project featuring Fumi Kaneko and William Bracewell. Fumi Kaneko is one of our personal favorite yes. ballerinas. Yes, yes. Uh, we spoke a lot about her in our Legendary Ballerinas video, which we'll link above and below. She and William Bracewell, I feel like good they're, match. they're good, very, good very well matched together. Yes, for sure. They seem to work well together. And following that, we got to see a beautiful rehearsal for Don Quixote featuring Natalia Osipova and Reese Clark, coached by the one and only Zenaida Yanowski, which was absolutely phenomenal. It was so cool to see three the, legends in one all room. The legends <laughs> in one room. I feel like Zenaida was I mean, I think, feel like she kind of recently retired. I relatively recently. Yeah. So it was kind of cool to see now that she's kind of taking the next steps in her career, becoming, you know, repetiteur slash coach and all of that. Mm -hmm. It was really beautiful to see that. Natalia and Reese Clark, they had a really wonderful synergy. Oh my gosh. For this so, first, so good. especially for this first act one sort of pas de ish Yeah. They mm -hmm. had a really good synergy together. Yeah. And one of my favorite things that about rehearsals is I love seeing what each rehearsal director has to say. Exactly. You know, she might say, okay, don't look this way quite so soon. Yeah. Wait a little longer. longer. It just conveys something completely different. It does. So to see that process of just mm -hmm. seasoning almost. Yeah, and it was so meticulous and so mm -hmm. perfectionistic. It was so, so very finely detailed. It was really amazing. Up, All right, thank you. And also sometime during the Royal Ballet's live stream, we got to see a beautiful, precious rehearsal of four of their Royal Ballet students rehearsing Frederick Ashton's Rhapsody, which was, I don't know, it just melted my heart so much. It was really beautiful. It First of so all, beautiful. the music, Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff. Secondly, the choreography, Ashton. Ashton. No words. And then these dancers. They were, they, you can hardly believe that they're students. I know. They're that good. They carry themselves so well, so professionally, mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful to see, you know, these young people taking that uh, taking that that role mm -hmm. so seriously like they are. And it's it, it really makes you feel like the next generation is very very promising yeah. in the world of ballet. It was beautiful to see them work through the character and work mm -hmm. through the piece and try to find their own way of interpreting that mm -hmm. role and maturing their artistry. It was it was just a precious rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now going to France, to none other than the Paris Opera Ballet. France was sort of the, the motherland of ballet of in general, so yes. of course we have to stop by France. It was nice to hear ballet being taught in its original language. Ballet, the, the language of ballet is very French. All yeah. our ballet terms are in French. To hear a ballet class actually being taught in French, it was just... It's perfect. It was really beautiful to see their classes and mm -hmm. hear what ballet kind of sounds like in its native tongue. It was mm -hmm. really, really special. And Paris opera dancers are always very, very strong. Very, very, very strong. They seem very precise yeah. to me. Yeah. They're very detailed. Very clean. Very yeah. clean. Very, dancers, very clean. So. Uh -huh. But yeah, anyway, beautiful, beautiful class by the Paris opera ballet. Would have loved to see more, but the class in itself was a highlight. Yes. <laughs> Ça dans ton chat 5, 
bien. Allez, les tournes, les bras jusqu'au bout, bien. Before we move on to the next location, because we have pretty much half the globe to go, mm -hmm. we're gonna take a brief intermission for an ad break. So refill your snacks, get some more tea, and we will see you in a moment. Welcome back everybody, let's continue on. All right, now heading to Austria, we have, I don't know how to pronounce this, Weiner Stas Wiener, Ballet? Wiener? Wiener? Wiener <laughs> Stas Ballet? In their live stream, we got to see a beautiful rehearsal from Giselle featuring Kyo Jung Kang and Brandon Say, both first soloists with the company. This rehearsal, oh my goodness, had me breathless. <sighs> Jaw on the floor, it was yeah. just so beautiful. Yeah. Oh I my goodness. I will say, Brendan was a very, very capable partner. Very strong partner. Mm -hmm. No, it was so, it looks so effortless and it mm -hmm. really made her look like that weightless, uh, lifeless yeah. ghost, you yeah. know? It just Those lifts where she goes like this. <sighs> It was so, so, yeah. so, so good. Watch it and you'll know what we mean. Yeah. It looked like a breath. It was yes. beautiful. And her ah. borets as well. She glides. Anyway, gorgeous rehearsal yes. and um, very insightful into, you know, sort of the inner workings of this mm -hmm. very difficult adage. I love seeing the close-up shots because you get you don't really get to see close up yeah. when you are watching ballet from, exactly. the, from the audience. World Ballet Day is really special to me because you get to see detail. You get to yeah. see exactly the motion from a, a different angle. Yeah, it's really, really cool to see that other view mm -hmm. that you don't get when you're just watching from like the audience. <laughs> So we are heading over to Sweden, the Royal Swedish Ballet, and here they were rehearsing Le Corsair, mm -hmm. one of my favorite ballets. We got to see a, their fabulous ballet repetiteur leading the rehearsal, and it was really, really something. There was a bunch of dancers, a bunch of different mm -hmm. casts, and I think they are going to have a really, really, really good production of Le Corsair in this coming season. Yes. This was a live rehearsal, yes. so they had actual audiences. Uh -huh. Sitting in the studio. That was cool. While they were rehearsing. I was a little bit jealous, I won't lie. You learn so much even just from watching. Yeah, watching it, you that's where they say watch and learn. It's one of the most <laughs> powerful ways of learning. You yeah. get to watch and you can replicate it. Polish National Ballet. This is another company that really brought it this World Ballet Day. They mm -hmm. gave us a lot of insiders' glances and it was really, really great. Starting with their Labaya Day rehearsal with Shinara Alizad and Vladimir Yaroshenko. If you saw our Giselle Insights video, they're the couple that we highlighted for the majority of that video. And they're an excellent, excellent couple. We got to see their beautiful Labaya Day pas de deux and oh my one of the best. So titles. beautiful. Also, a very big highlight <laughs> of World Ballet Day is Marco Jusela took us backstage to see him transform into the golden idol in La Baia Dare. That was very interesting. That was very, very cool. 
backstage footage. Yeah. They got like some airbrush tool and they got to <laughs> yeah. spray them all over. It was yeah. it was very intensive. Yeah. Again, it's like you you wonder how did they get them like that on stage? Well, now you know. Yeah, I was now thinking you know. paint brushes, but like it's actually an it's airbrush. A That's how they make it look so even, I right. suppose. Following that, of course, we had an actual Golden Idol rehearsal. Yes. The men did an amazing job. Yes. Golden Idol is a very difficult variation, from my knowledge. Not that yes. I've done it myself. No. But from my knowledge, it's a very challenging, very demanding variation. So, yeah. of course, they did an amazing, amazing job. And of course, the entrance of the shades, definitely the hardest. We've, we've said this before, definitely the hardest corps de ballet number in all of ballet. Their company looks beautiful. They have a lovely well. company. They all were, you know, bringing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. really, really good. Definitely, if you have a chance to go see them live next season, definitely go see their Le Bayadere. So now we're going way, way south to Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a look at Joburg Ballet. We got a beautiful glance into their morning class directed by Angela Milan. And we also got to have a look at their prop table for their upcoming performance of Don Q. Very excited. Don Q, I've, we've seen a lot of Don Q. I feel like this year's season's gonna have a lot of Don Q in it. And, and a lot of Giselle as well. A lot of Don Q and a lot of Giselle. So yeah. I think it's gonna be a good season. You can't go wrong with those two. Those are their iconic classics. I feel like nobody really hears a whole lot about Joburg Ballet, but if you're in the area, check them out. Check them out. <laughs> I think you'll you'll be very much impressed. They're a good company. So now we're gonna hike it all the way back up to Russia. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a look at the Bolshoi Ballet, of yes. course. One of the biggest ballet companies probably in all of the world, period. It's yeah. one of the biggest companies for sure. Most well known. We got to see their rehearsal for La Bayadere Parada, featuring Maria Koshkiryova and Vladislav Lanchatov. Maria actually just joined the company this season as a soloist, mm -hmm. and she already got the very prestigious role of Gonzadi, mm -hmm. which is a huge, huge honor. And I think they're gonna work really well together. It was a beautiful rehearsal. They danced really well together. I liked her tutu as well, but that's yeah. not the point. <laughs> <laughs> they also had some Giselle and Swan Lake rehearsals, which were very, very beautiful as always. We we really are having a lot of Giselle yes, this World Ballet Day. A lot of Giselle and on cue. Провела ножку, сиди. Угу, хорошо, Лиза. И вдохни. Вырасти ещё. And now we're gonna head off to Asia, starting off in Hong Kong with the Hong Kong Ballet. They had a beautiful, beautiful class. And of course, we have to mention this, we had a cameo appearance from the one, the only, the amazing, the legend, queen. the queen herself, Marianela Nunez. <laughs> She's there in Hong Kong for the International Gala of Stars. There were a few other international dancers that were yes. not with Hong Kong Ballet. Constantine Allen from Dutch National, mm -hmm. Meng Ying Feng, and Zhu Ming Chen. Both of those are from National Ballet of China. Mm -hmm. They're also there for the International Gala of Stars. So it was cool to see them all there taking class. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong Ballet, it's beautiful. Really, really strong company. Absolutely stellar company. Mm -hmm. But yes, I had a really, really good time watching class. You can never go wrong with watching a good ballet class. Especially if Marinella Nunez makes a cameo appearance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then going into National Ballet of China. Our favorite part of their live stream was definitely their Swan Lake Act 3 rehearsal, which was absolutely glorious. Obviously, as Asians ourselves, we were very, very happy to see <laughs> the arts being fostered in the Asian countries. So yeah. obviously this was heartwarming to see it for, was. for us. But aside from that, you can't ever go wrong with Swan Lake. And also because this Padida, you almost you don't see it as much. It doesn't get as much fame yeah. as maybe the iconic Black. love duet yeah. and the iconic Black Swan Padida. This the Act Three Padida doesn't get as much publicity. Yeah, although it is still very, very, very beautiful. It's almost even more heart 
wrenching yeah. as a love duet. Yeah, so it was really nice to see it get its due representation yes. in World Ballet Day. So. It was really good to see that one. Sliding over a little bit to Korea. We have yes. the National Ballet of Korea, and they had a beautiful onstage class with their ballet master, Young Chol Lee. Uh, they're, they're, no words. Their dancers are so strong. Yeah, the amazing are... jumpers, amazing turners. Like the really, really solid company. And artistically, all their portrait bra was very, very nice. Very, very, very delicate and very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Also, I will say that the way they filmed that class was beautiful. They yeah. had the spotlights on, oh my lens gosh. flare, everything. <laughs> it was beautifully produced. Very yeah. beautifully produced. One, two, kidarigo. They also gave us a few sneak peeks to their season, so mm -hmm. they gave us a few short clips of their triple bill. There is definitely a lot more information on their website, mm -hmm. but from what we saw, they look very, very, very cool. I would definitely recommend looking into them because they are a solid company, beautiful dancers, mm -hmm. and, and they look like they have a really, really good season lined up. National Ballet of Japan. Yes. They, they graced us, of course, with another beautiful class. I think they're actually on tour right, right now. now. Yeah. So they took class in a different facility than their usual, but it was a beautiful class nonetheless. Uh -huh. And whoop. And in their little intermission, they gave us a trailer slash interview kind of thing on their new work, a ballet based on the tragedy of Macbeth. Yeah. And of course, if you know the story of Macbeth, it looks very, very, very scary. It seemed very reminiscent of one of those like Macmillan ballets. Yes, so it very does. Very dark, very dramatic. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking into a very dramatic sort of ballet, then Macbeth might be your thing. Last stop on the globe, Australia. Of course, the Australian Ballet, yes. one of the companies that helped start World Ballet Day in the first place. Um, and in their live stream, we were blessed to see a very precious rehearsal of The Dream by Frederick Ashton, one of my favorite ballets ever, mm -hmm. directed by the Ashton Repetitor, <laughs> yeah. Christopher Carr. I specialize in Ashton ballets and they are, I only do masterpieces. Actually, that is all I do. Just, just the best. Yeah, just, just the best. Just, just focus yeah, on the absolutely. best. Absolutely. And oh my gosh, so good. Christopher Carr really knows how to. He refer. knows Ashton. He knows Ashton, and he is. He can command the room in a very, very good way. Yeah, in a very in professional a still, way. In a still professional and respectful, respectful way. way. But he gets stuff done. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful court of ballet piece, and. Goodness, the dancers are beautiful. It was Australian amazing. Ballet is a beautiful company. They perform Ashton very, very well. It, well. It, fits, it suits them. It mm -hmm. suits them so well. Yeah. I love watching Christopher Carr rehearse the dancers because he's so detail oriented. Mm -hmm. He's very, very particular. Everything he works on is exactly perfect. No detail goes untouched mm -hmm. or unnoticed. So it's very, very good. And also for the dancers, credit to them for being able to apply all of his notes yes. and adapting that style so easily. Mm -hmm. And it Beautiful. really looked perfect. Pull, back to back and pull, and shoot, travel, travel, travel. 11, 12. And they also had an amazing Four Little Swans rehearsal. Four Little Swans, it's it's a hard it's number. A hard, it's a very hard, hard number. It's also one of the most celebrated. Mm -hmm. So there's a significant amount of pressure to get it good. But these dancers, they it looked very easy on them. Yeah. You know, yeah. it looked not like they were pushing or fighting against each other. Yeah. They were all working together in a really good way. Obviously, that was just very nice to see. It makes me happy. It's one, yeah. of, one of my favorite um, sections of Swan Lake. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the world's favorite sections of Swan Lake, though. So I think so. <laughs> Pretty 
strong arabesque. Okay, good, really lovely. Finally, our last stop of the day is the Queensland Ballet Academy, and they were rehearsing, this is kind of a fun one, the Tarantella from Napoli, yes. rehearsed by Guy Wheatstone, and mm -hmm. oh my gosh, y'all know how much we love this piece. It is one of our favorite <laughs> yes. pieces of ballet rep, and they did it so good. Tarantella is not easy, so fast, so articulate, and you need to be on every single second of mm. it. So they did a really good job, props to them, especially being so young yeah. and being able to handle these professional roles. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very good opportunity for them. This was, of course, made our hearts happy. It was a yeah. very, very big highlight for us because yeah. clearly Napoli, one of our favorite ballets, and the Tarantella, which is one of our favorite pieces in, in Napoli. Napoli. So yeah, we just decided to pop this in to the end of our broadcast because it made us smile and hopefully it will make you smile as well. Good. Keep the eye contact. Good. Look at him. Just slow, Mr. Mark. Now sharing center. Fix your spacing. Sharp. Is that it? Did we traverse the entire globe yet? I, I think we have. <laughs> Thus concludes our World Ballet Day 2023 highlights reel. I think it's really amazing that the whole world could get together on World Ballet Day just to celebrate ballet and kind of just get together on our one common passion, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a special opportunity to kind of knit our communities together with the beautiful arts. And to celebrate the behind the scenes also. Yeah, to celebrate the hard work, celebrate the sort of the everyday, yeah, and I the, think. And the people that make the art happen. A big thank you to all the companies who participated in World Ballet Day today and provided all of these lovely live streams for us to watch this year and also to all the dancers around the world all the different ballet schools and companies whether you're a student professional an adult beginner whatever it is thank you for your dedication to your craft and for your passion for the arts and for just building that community of ballet nerds and ballet lovers and ballet dancers and we're wishing you all the best in the upcoming season in your education in your performances and in your rehearsals keep dancing keep doing what you do and we love you if you liked hearing us talk about ballet, then we actually have an entire playlist <laughs> dedicated to all the videos where we talk about ballet. If you'd like to geek out with us, it's there. Hopefully you will enjoy it. Additionally, we are really quickly approaching 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. Absolutely, impossibly insane. That's crazy. And we're also approaching Ballet Rain's very first birthday at the very, very end of the year. So if you don't want to miss out for all the fun that we're about to have regarding those two events, especially with Nutcracker season and everything. So so um, yeah, you definitely don't want to miss out, so subscribe to our channel and we'll keep you up to date. Anyway, I think that is all from us for now. This is Valley Rain signing off. Until the next video. Bye. <laughs> of course. Sorry, to the motorcycle. Dude. <laughs>